we flew here to Madeline's Landing and uh, we fought against some strange droids right outside the planet from the Islanti Empire and uh, that was kind of weird because we weren't expecting that but uh, we took him out landed on the planet away from Madeline's Landing just in case because uh, it didn't seem like things were right and then we made our way that direction got uh, got kind of ambushed I suppose not really ambushed we, we ran into a troop of a few Aslanti uh, soldiers with one guy running away from him. Yeah. Jellic. Jellic, yeah. Jellic, Jello. Uh, Jellic. <laughs> yeah. He was a little cowardly, but, uh, you know, he, and he said that, um, he said that some of the people that we were there to meet to deliver uh, some cargo to, specifically Sedona and, uh, I think Madeline to like his ex-wife or something um, got captured and are being held in the barracks I believe uh, in the middle of town by a Lieutenant Sharu I think is her name if I yeah. remember right yeah uh, so and we, we right now we are getting ready to head to Madeline's Landing to check out and see what's going on see what, if we can maybe just get our money really that's uh i think our main goal but i guess along the way we could rescue those people that are caught for right now well we have to rescue them to get our money right yeah that's true, they're gonna yeah. pay us so yeah you know. the islanti they uh i thought about dealing with them but then i actually read about the islanti i i didn't realize that we just be slaves like there's just no no question in it they're kind of jerks they don't really too, deal with non-humans so. Yeah, they they are a bunch of jerks. The Islanti. Yeah, that they, they uh yeah, here's a if you want to read more about cuz I'm going to build that not only the the planetary database but I'm going to build the database also for the Islanti Star Empire and all the other organizations. So um there you go. Uh, I'll share. I don't know if you guys did. You guys just get that shared sheet? The the Azanti yep. Yeah, I just okay. popped up. Yeah. All right. So that's for the Azanti, and then here's for the uh, Abadar Court, and uh, and you guys can put those down on your macro bars down below. But uh, I when, once I get the the intergalactic uh, planetary database done, that's such a tongue twisting word for me because I don't speak very well. So. Yeah, I'm going to build another one for all the organizations and cults and et cetera. So you'll just have a bunch of computer screens. You can just look up all the information. And then I'm eventually going to do that with, like, rules and starship combat and all that other stuff, too. So you'll have access to everything. So yeah, I'm going to put a lot of work into the uh, Starfinder campaign because I, I really like Starfinder. It's, it's That's awesome. looking sweet. Yeah, it's a great game, man. All right, so you guys actually did make it to the the outskirts of Madeline's Landing. You also have Jellic with you. He had told you about his wife, you know, Abretta, and her junk shop. He hasn't been there. He actually hasn't seen her since their divorce from the last couple of months. So, <laughs> yeah, he, you guys are right on the outskirts of Madeline's Landing and I've already shared the map with you guys I put your tokens there so we'll take uh, we'll take Rio out because she's not here we'll take her off the map and uh, there you go you five are here there is the the junk shop and as you're looking at the junk junk shop it is uh, it's like these you know those shipping containers at the at the you know at, and all the ports with all those big metal yeah. containers. That's what they. That's what basically these look like. And this junk shop is three of these huge, you know, f prefabricated modules that are they're all connected together. And like I said, they're the size of a shipping container. So the the central one and and. Jellic is pretty much telling. I, I keep wanting to call him Jelly. I don't know why I want to call, call him Jelly, but I'm I'm just going to call him Jelly because I'm going to butcher it anyway. So, so Jelly or Jellic, he told you that the the central module 
uh, is pretty much where all the repairs happen. Uh, you can also see that there's a, a fence that goes around this place as well, probably about 8 to 10 feet tall. Uh, so he's got a repair bay, and then there's one just full of all kinds of tools, ones for storage, and then, you know, the other is where he and his wife used to live until they got divorced a couple of years ago, and he hasn't seen her since. So, but he can he can still get inside of the uh, he can still get inside of the junkyard. So, but the door he says is on the opposite side, uh, and there are some. Jellic tells you that usually there are some patrols of Aslanti uh, soldiers that usually patrol, and one of the patrols usually patrols just the outskirts, and they usually hang out in the graveyard. That he doesn't know why he's, he's like maybe they're maybe they're smoking cancer sticks or smoking weed or something like that over in the over in the cemetery. Uh, but then there's a the in the middle where I'm going to show you guys with the pointer. This is the the garrison, and this is another. He explains it as another prefabricated module, but this is much 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 stronger because this is actually. This is actually lower down from from the large Aslanti Empire ship that was uh, here at Madeline's Landing. So they just kind of lowered that that garrison down. Uh, so it's 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 much stronger than everything else. Are those armaments on top of there? Yes, th those are. Uh, and yeah, you guys can kind of position yourself a little bit further over here on the on the right hand side, but. Yeah, uh, Jellic says that they they have a couple of large uh, guns that are mounted on the on the roof of this container, just so in case they get attacked from above, they'll have at least a little bit of defense to where they can, if it's a small ship, they can kind of repel it off. But he says those are actually pretty pretty big laser cannons, and that they will reach they will reach uh, through the atmosphere. But with all of the remember. You know, this planet is pretty much cast in fog, so visibility is maybe 80 feet at best. So, and you guys have to kind of, you guys can skirt around the entire Madeline's Landing to get a look at all of these different uh, containers. And, you know, you guys can actually kind of sketch them out as well as you're, as you're kind of moving around, you know what I mean? So those cannons aren't designed for like ground combat. I don't even know. They they wouldn't even reach. They wouldn't. They wouldn't even be able to be pointed towards the ground because of the sort of like the the wall that's kind of or the palisade that's on the top of the uh, sure the garrison. Yeah. So they they just basically point point up. Okay. Well, I wanted. It's to... not like they'd be able to point it over towards you guys and wham and just disintegrate, you know, fifty feet of forest all around you. Yeah, you, they wouldn't be able to do that. That's what I wanted to make sure of. <laughs> no, I I don't blame you for asking. So yeah, but no, but they're 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 basically just firing straight up. All right. So are we still entertaining the idea of some of us being prisoners and going inside of here? I think we need to uh, investigate a little bit first. We we may want to get into this little uh, repair shop and sort of make it a, a tiny base of operations real quick, just so we can see what's going on. Maybe that's not the best course of action, but I think I think we should do some reconnaissance first. But that's okay. that's one of the possible plans. He says I'm that proposing. his wife will wel probably welcome you with open arms. I mean, especially if if you were supposed to have dealings with her and also Madeline Kessie. You know, she said it, she'd probably welcome you with open arms. If I remember correctly, they're pretty much just being like, um, they're not really slaves, though. They're they're going about their business, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. So, Two were imprisoned that okay. they know of. Well, actually, they said that there's probably about another half dozen that have been imprisoned because they tried to do a revolt the first time. Uh, and you know, of course, some got killed, and also some were taken prisoner as well. And uh, remember, you guys all know this Sedona, this this guy named Sedona, and you know, you've worked with this person, Sedona, 
different ways depending on what your you know your theme is so yeah so supposedly Sedona your friend and also the leader of the camp Madeline named after Madeline those two and some of the other revolters are, are supposedly in the garrison uh, I can't remember is it light or, or did it get dark by the time we got here uh, it was getting dark it was just starting to get dark but you can see as you're looking out of the you know the shrubs bushwhacking it you can see that there are other members of the community of Madeline's Landing walking around carrying jugs of water carrying food and you know just hanging out and intermingling with one another so it's not like they're in chains or anything like that I mean they're roaming around free they just have you know this Aslanti garrison now in the middle of their landing so they, they are restricted but yeah so is it likely that we'll be we could be just walking around right you possibly could be able to walk around I mean if you kind of you know and Jellic says this Jellic says well you, you you could probably maybe wear your robes or uh, and, you know and speaking out of character here didn't you guys say you took their armor too those guards armor yeah I did yeah we did we took yeah. enough for a couple of disguises and he said that you know you could probably use the armor as well if not probably just roam around freely you know it's not like you know the guards are just everywhere at one time you know there's there's just a couple that are roaming outside and he says most of the time the outer perimeter those those cadets and he calls them cadets they're over there in the graveyard most of the time but he knows that there's there's also some some cadets and also uh, that's where you know the person in charge which is a uh, master at arms uh, Olar Raja Olar Raja's in the garrison but the you know the lieutenant Sheru lieutenant Sheru left and and actually left the, the camp on foot it, they didn't they didn't fly off in the, in the, you know in the in the Atlantis starship they with an with another squad couple squads of troops they took off into the into the jungle for some reason but that's that's all he knows and that's you know information that he found out from from the others what is this structure over here to the northeast the extreme northeast of the camp oh jellic jellic tells you that that is uh that is a storehouse it's it's he says oh that's that's four four of the uh, storage containers put together and it's run by uh, the clerk. His name is Rendell Tace, and he he's a he's a very, I guess you could say, eager beaver. And I, I don't think he he likes the Aslanti too much being here, much like everybody else. But he's he was saying that he was gonna he was gonna get him if they even came into us came into the uh, the supply shop. He says, I was, I'm going to get those guys if they think they're just going to come in here and take what I have or take what we have. So that's the structure I have marked with a pointer? Yeah, the big four. Yeah, it's four wide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to propose to the group that I try and sneak up there and maybe climb up on top of that structure and get in a, a stealthy position to kind of oversee everything else that's going on. You guys remember you guys got com com units too, so you can you can continue you, you know continue to communicate if you guys kind of split up and go different ways. So yeah, you can still communicate. Remember, this is this is not D and D. You guys got you guys got your little Apple iPads and you know your headsets and all that other shit. So yeah. may I may I suggest then um, that I do one somewhere so we can kind of get like two sets of eyes going. Oh, you, you were kind of breaking up there towards the end. I was going to say I could go to one across from his. That way we get two sets of eyes, like different angles going up. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say, you know, if there's, you know, five of us tromping around together, it may draw more attention than just, say, a couple of you guys walking through. So um, maybe, yeah, if one or two of us could get up and just – kind of isolate ourselves and give a little cover fire if something breaks out. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Okay. 
Uh, I like that. Uh, so F U and Cade. <laughs> so F U. You can. <laughs> Sorry. You, uh, <laughs> you, you can both uh, go do your stealthy thing and go hang out on top of some of the buildings. Uh, uh, Jelly knees. Why don't you take us around to the front of this uh, mechanic shop and get us in here? What'd you say? So the two of you guys head out there. The four of us will try to get into this shop and see what we can find. Sounds I good. Like it. All right. You guys want another? You guys want another uh, pointer? A couple pointers on there to where we can kind of figure out where you guys are going to be. I think that would be a good idea. Let me let me put another couple pointers on here for you. All right, so yeah, you can. Uh, we'll leave the pointer here for the junk shop. So why don't you guys take these two pins over here in the the brush in the top, and you guys can move those around. So I believe it's that's where I want to try. F U and Cade, right? F U and Cade. That's right. All right. I gotta get used to your Starfinder names now. What is this right over here? Uh, in the middle, it's yeah. just a it's a destroyed uh, a destroyed. That's container. what I thought. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It, Jellix is yeah that uh, that crater there was from a uh, a shot from the starship when we were trying to revolt. Actually, you think there's enough debris? cover there and still like peek through uh sure yeah yeah I'll, I'll try that then kind of be on the ground and you guys can walk around freely like i said i mean you guys can you guys don't see any of the aslanti troops anywhere so you guys are able to to walk around you know yeah i want to try and circle around to the back of this container here and with my eyes open for any kind of patrols or anything like that. Sure, you can you can climb up onto the the top of the storehouse, and you do see that there is a uh, a contingency of of guards over in the cemetery. There are three uh, three privates over there, and they're just kind of they're not you know they're not desecrating anything they're just kind of leaning up against the the stones and just talking and hanging out they're not doing anything now where is the time. cemetery at Dave? sorry right over here no problem right here with the green arrow upper right Understood. upper right gotcha yep. gotcha yep well I, I think we've got some uh, we've got three guys who are separated from the rest of their uh their crew. I think we go take those guys out first. Yeah, that could be possible. That's probably the best idea. Jelks, do, 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 do you want to meet my wife first, or, or are you guys just going right into full killing mode? You guys are actually pretty impressive, by the way. Let's let's uh, let's meet your wife. Yes, we are impressive, aren't we? Yeah, uh, let's sure. go ahead and let's let's get this reunion on. I mean, you haven't seen your wife in a go ahead long and take, time, right? Well, take it. Uh, sorry, could I go ahead and take a ten to repair my drone a little bit, and then um, put on the armor? Uh, yeah, I was looking up. I was looking up about uh, drone repair, and you can, you know, you can salvage the brain, and you can salvage the all of the inner workings of it, like all of the data and stuff with the, with the computer. But it, it takes what twelve hours, un, uninterrupted twelve hours to uh, repair your. That's. Your drone. I think that's if it's destroyed, um, it, and that works like if you die, right? But if it's just taken down to zero, it essentially, and you have to repair it. I I think it's like a little different. I thought it I mean, was destroyed, wasn't it? Because it went um, past, it went past zero, right? But it doesn't have to go over like the. Uh, was it the hit point threshold or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I think it has to go over the hit point threshold to be actually destroyed. It would be d disabled, right? If I'm trying to remember all this, I think it's disabled, right? 
Yeah, I just read. Um, I don't yeah. have it in front of me, but it's something like that. Yeah, it takes like twenty four hours or or so to repair or to like rebuild it essentially, and then you can like you could pretty much do all the uh, skills and stuff differently if you wanted to. But since since I didn't go over as, as far as I know, I don't think it went over like the hit point max. No, um, I don't it just took me to zero either. and probably a little bit past. But um, yeah, I don't. I didn't see much about repair, but I do have a, f- a feat or ability. Let's see what it was. Or yeah, sorry, it says if your drone is ever destroyed or lost, you retain its mind and all of its subroutines in your custom rig, and can replace its body for free using your custom rig after 24 hours of interrupted work. You can take a single eight-hour rest during each 24 hours to, to work on it, so you'd have to do it in three chunks. Uh, but any other interrupted uh, interruption greater than a uh, time required... Mm-hmm. Yeah, a moment of conversation re- re- requires you to add another 12, 12 hours. So. Okay, yeah. Um, but I have a mechanic trick that says... Um, it's the repair drone one, and it says yeah. when you spend 10 minutes, 10 minutes to repair your drone... You repair twenty five percent of its max instead of ten percent. Yeah. If a drone, yeah, here, here it is, right here. It's a uh, up uh, the paragraph above. If a drone takes damage from a single attack equal to uh, points to zero, yeah, it, that's if it's hit point max, so it's not destroyed. So uh, let's see. Yeah, the drones cannot recover from damage on its own. If a drone is reduced to zero hit points, it becomes inactive until it is restored to one one hit point or more. So your feet will take it to what twenty five percent? Yeah, which will probably be just like two hit For points. What? So you want? I guess what do you want to do? You want to do it at uh, at the the junk shop, or or where are you going to do it? Um, I was gonna I was gonna take it into the, that destroyed uh, shipping container and then just do it in there. That's fine. It's only ten minutes, so. Yeah, go ahead and uh, this little repair roll, engineering repair or something like that. Yeah, I believe it would be engineering. Let's do something here real quick. All right. So you, and while you're doing that, f you, <laughs> f you, you get climbed up on top of the, uh, on top of the the storehouse, and that's where you see the, like I said, the guards over there in the, in the cemetery. They're like I said, they're not destroying it or they're just it's a place to hang out. Kind of off, you know, into the the foliage a little bit to where, you know, the master at arms or any other patrolling uh units wouldn't wouldn't see him slacking off basically. Yeah, just getting a little alone time. Yeah. Yeah, I just uh I wanna try and I don't want to call it a perimeter, but I want to kind of just move around the top of this building, you know, stealthily and unobservedly as much as possible and just try and keep an eye on everything that's going on around here. Yeah, you see a couple of, uh, you see the, the garrison, you can see that there is a, uh, uh, give me a, I would say give me a common knowledge check, any kind of like, in fact, why don't you give me like, an engineering check or like a computer's check or anything like that. Engineering check, whatever you got the best of. God, your plus 12 computers, Jesus. So yeah, you notice that there's a, over here where I got the pointer here, the green pointer, there is a, looks like a moisture collector. Uh, moisture collector, probably how they get all of their their water to stay hydrated and you drink and stuff like that. Cool. That's good information. Yeah. And uh, you also see here, there is a, uh, up on a, like a sturdy metal pole, up 30 feet. It's like got this, uh, and it's just at the very ceiling of the of the fog. And this is a, a pretty wide metal cage. And it's got like this angled opening, sort of like a, like a crab trap or something. I don't know if you've ever been crabbing, but... You know, it has like an angle to where something can go in and it can't get back out. And this, at the very top of, of the pole, there's like this uh, wire mesh and it has like these capacitors on it. And it's like got this uh, electricity that's kind of cackling and crackling around. 
and inside inside of this box it has those creatures that you guys saw again remember those uh those little blue monkeys little, yeah, yeah those cute little monkeys and yeah th- there's almost like a dozen of those things uh in that cage and that cage is just kind of like swinging around and squeaking and stuff like that so yeah this is uh these are the cute little hobgars they're called hobgars and uh, they're the cute little monkey guys <laughs> oh yeah i was reading i was reading on your little planet info about those guys <laughs> yeah yeah no that that would be in the the intergalactic you know the intergalactic planetary database you know they're they're attracted to lightning so obviously this is like a hobgar crab trap where you know they're drawn to the lightning they climb up the pole they slide right on into the trap and they can't get out so that that's pretty much what has <laughs> happened to those guys i think it'd be it might be interesting to uh let one or two of those things out of there that's a uh, that's a possibility. Uh, Tresco is wanting one of those. Yeah. You want one of those as a pet, Tresco? Yeah. He would probably if you got a bunch of technology on you, he would probably he would probably love that. <laughs> You'd probably be getting all kinds of wires and stuff uh bit and everything else. Also, can you guys uh change your nickname if you don't mind? For the, uh, uh, for the purpose it, of the overlay. Whatever your character's name is. Which one of us? Uh, uh, Looks hey, like, what's uh, up, Furied? Furied's here now. What's up? And, uh, Mike, if you want to change yours. It's so whatever, uh, you know, it's on the... Your name is on the overlay. I'm so sorry for being so, so late. That's okay. Hope everything's all right. Yeah, mine's set at uh, cash. Awesome. So yeah, to to get you caught up, Fury, uh, I'm sorry, Rio. Everybody's kind of scoping out Madeline's landing now. But that's pretty much what you guys see. I mean, there's quite a few crates. Most of them are houses. But there's some other ones. There's like a... Uh, Jellic tells you that there's a stable and there's uh, the administrator's uh, administrator's house. And, you know, basically that's where uh, I believe Madeline stays. There's also a... Uh, Let's see what else is all there's the water uh, moisture collector, the garrison, the cemetery, uh, yeah, and then the, of course you know you got Alberta's uh, junk shop as well. Okay, at this point I just want to keep an eye on the parties back that's going into the junk shop and be able to give them any kind of advance notice of anybody coming in their area. No, there's nobody coming. So you guys are, I guess you three at the door wanted to go into the junk shop then? Yep. All right, so you guys are invited in, and, you know, you, know, you got a sight. Uh, so, you know, you two out there, you get your robot repaired, your your droid kid, you get it repaired. Cool. So uh, also I made, I want to show you one other thing too. I made a grenade target. So anytime you guys want to throw a grenade... Um, here's like right beside the warehouse this little grenade target so you would just do your grenade roll and this has an AC of 5 like what the grenade DC is and that's that's how we'll do grenades so we'll just throw this down there and you guys would awesome. throw your grenades on the target and just put it wherever you want to put it and etc so I may have to make it friendly towards you guys so yeah there you go I'll make it uh, friendly for you guys so then you know you guys can I think you guys can you guys move it around yeah yep, there you go I just yeah. moved it yeah so let me uh, can you move it now as it's a hostile no 
Okay, that's what I thought. So we'll leave it at a... How about a, a neutral? Can you move it as neutral? Nope. All right. So we'll leave it as a uh, as a friendly. So yeah, that'll that'll be the, the gran- grenade target that you guys can uh, move around and throw grenades. Grenades are awesome in this game. Awesome. There's so Woo-hoo. many grenades. And it's so easy to throw a grenade. But just don't screw up. I mean, because it can be pretty bad. It can land right beside you and <laughs> blow up. <laughs> <laughs> but I think with everybody's, you know, everybody's checks, you would probably only fail on like a one, I would imagine. I've seen the YouTube videos. It can happen. <laughs> <laughs> it can. All right. So you guys are, uh, you know, like like I said, oh, let me put a uh, – I didn't know you were going to – here, let me get Rio back into the, the tracker. There you go. And Rio, I'll put you down onto the map. So there you go. And you can move around where you want to go. If you want to climb up on top of one of the containers or if you want to go inside of the uh, the junk shop, you can just place your token anywhere. Because you all have comm systems, so you can stay in communication with one another. So. And what did you say the junk shop was? Uh, right up at the top, and I'll share the, the map where, with you. There you go. That's where we are all at. Yep, so right where the point Rio. is, top, top center. Rio, you took care of that, that one last guard, didn't you? Of oh, course. yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. That's, that's, why you're, that's why you're lagging a little behind. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yeah, so, he's, he's taken care of. Somewhere. Appreciate it. Yeah, just just you know, safe safe and sound somewhere. Sure. Shallow grave with uh, some foliage just thrown over him. <laughs> what? I had to bury him. I just threw rocks at him. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, you are you know, and you know, Jellicky takes a uh, puts the coat into the keypad on the gate and opens it up, and he says, "Oh man, I hope I hope she is not going to be pissed at me for being here." So he, uh, you know opens up the the inner door and the door slides open and kind of catches a a Breda off guard a little bit as he walks in and she says what are you doing here and you can hear something be thrown and like a like a dish or something smashes up against the side of the container and shatters but uh Jellick says oh I've I've we've got some visitors here They, they they may be able to help us and plus they have the delivery uh for the landing Oh, and she says, oh, 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 sorry, come on in. And, and you know, as you guys are, you know, brought inside, you know, she's pretty much kind of pushing a bunch of, like, a stack of data pads to the side on one of the couches, kind of just shoves them over onto the floor. And uh, she's an older-looking woman. You know, she's got tawny-looking skin, and she's a, she's, a, uh, she's a thicker woman. She's got, you know, long fingers. She's got this piercing gaze, you know, wavy brown hair as you guys are coming in. And this is uh, this is what she looks like. And uh, her name is uh, oh, Al- uh, Albretta, yeah. Albretta, you, you look so much more beautiful than Jellic ever gave you credit for. <laughs> she kind of pats her hair. She says, oh, oh, thanks a lot. And she just kind of gives Jellic a stare. And... She says, why don't you get our guests something to drink and something to snack on? Basically, get out of my sight, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so, yeah, he uh, he goes into, uh, you know, behind one of these, uh, like, drapes, sort of like a bead curtain or something like that. And you can hear, you know, some porcelain, you know, kind of clanking around cups and plates and stuff like that. So, but, you know, she's uh, she seems... You know, pretty hospitable. Hospitable. She seems nice, and uh, she invites you guys in. And you know, she, uh, ha- you know, please take a seat, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and uh, she says, uh, "So you have the delivery? We have a. I have a pr- issue with that right now because, unfortunately, the person that takes care of all of that type of transaction type of stuff uh, is." gone she's been taken and uh, placed in the garrison in the middle of the landing uh, as a prisoner uh, but you know she says and, and uh, why why you know what else have you was that the only reason why you've came did you did you hear any of our distress signals or anything like that or was it just just strictly business uh, we were just uh, just here to deliver the the goods um, 
didn't hear any distress signal or anything. We now we were attacked right outside the planet by the droids mm. of the Islanti, but I we haven't didn't notice any uh, distress signal that I know of. We were just here to deliver. Oh, maybe we've been maybe we were jammed by the Islanti. Maybe they had some type of uh, energy uh, energy shield up that was. Mm. Yeah, but we did have a distress signal. But, uh, w you know, actually, we could use some help. I mean, we are in dire need of help, actually, uh, here. I mean, it We've could, noticed. Yeah, we, yeah we, you know, we haven't been able to contact the corporation to let, to let them know that we've been taken over by the uh, Islanti. Uh, you know, the, they're from the, the vastness of space, so they just they just appeared here one day and they just started taking over us. And in fact, I don't even think they expected us to be here. But that's that's you know that's pretty much it. I mean, huh. we tried to have a revolt, but the ship came came down into uh, from orbit, came down into uh, our atmosphere. You know, of course, we've got plenty of cover, but the ship came down through the cover to where I mean, it, I mean, you could literally feel the heat coming off of the thrusters and. And they blasted a big hole in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the landing. Do you wow. have any idea why they've done this? Why they've come to conquer you, or or something about the planet? Well, they we have a, a another one of our other residents here named Sedona. She supposedly she found something uh, that was uh, in a, a shipwreck. A couple of uh, an, an old shipwreck that she had found out exploring out in the jungle some time back. Well, supposedly she found some piece of something. I don't. I don't even. I have no clue what it is. But uh, she found something, and the Islanti they, they they basically interrogated everybody, and she was taken. But she, you know, she. You know, she found this, and she didn't really speak that much of it. I don't even know if she knew what it was. Is this being broadcast to us at all? On communicators? Yeah, yeah, I've got an open channel. Ask him who's in charge. Well, there was a, there was a couple. There was this uh, Lieutenant Sharu. She was the, uh, the lieutenant that was here that came off of the ship. Uh, and there's a master at arms that's in the, that's down there in a the garrison, and his name is a uh, master at arms, Alaraju, and he's basically taking charge of, the well, Lieutenant Sharu has put him in control while she has gone out into the woods. I I guess that the lieutenant has taken a couple squads out there to look at the shipwreck that Sedona had found. Hmm. And there's oh, yeah. all kinds of like wires coming down, you know, hanging down, and you can hear wires kind of touching and you know sparking and arcing and stuff like that. There's like tool chests everywhere, spools of wire, all kinds of like broken equipment, and it's a mess in here. Storage crates, broken furniture, everything. It's just like a, it's like a, it's a junkyard basically. Anything of value that we've seen? Or is it all just junk? Yeah, oh, this. Scotty's found some really cool stuff. He's <laughs> yeah. got like four or five different little circuit boards or capacitors or, or some kind of servo, and he's he's fiddling with stuff right now. It's yeah. really cool. Any kind of junk you're like this would be like heaven for a mechanic. You know what I mean? Any kind of like mechanic or a gnome or anything like that. Yeah, so. <laughs> but, yeah, she's she's definitely not happy that, you know, they're here and and she actually she thinks it's just a matter of time before the Islanti come for her as well so she says that's why she's pretty much stayed out of sight and pretty much just stayed locked up in her in her shop and she's says, sorry for the mess everybody but all right it well, is well, a junk tell shop. me what uh, what can Cash's crew do for you we're here you Ooh. know what uh, what are you wanting done uh well <laughs> I'd like to get these Aslanti uh, out of here, but then again, will there be any kind of repercussion if we do? Will they come back with a a larger force? But she says well, that she's. Uh, oh, go ahead. 
I said, well, the, we've already killed the, uh, we've already killed a few of them, so there'll be uh, there'll be some blowback from that at least. And I and I also asked her if uh, if she knows where the wreck is that uh, Sedona found. Uh, I I I don't know where it is, but maybe you can find out by going to the administrative shop. Maybe there's some type of records or something like that in there. It, it could be. But I don't know. All she did was talk about a shipwreck and an old shipwreck. It wasn't any kind of like modern, modern ship. It was something from ages past. She said. Is Sedona being held in the garrison? Uh, as far yes. as I know, yes. Uh, Sedona and also um, Madeline are both there. Uh, of course, if, with uh, a couple of the other uh, individuals that tried to help us. Uh, with a, I guess you could say, a, a failed attempt to get rid of the uh, Aslanti, but, uh, you know, our secret rebellion that we had, yeah. But, you know, there you are know, more brother. disgruntled colonists here, and, you know, we we would definitely like to try to take out every, all of the Aslanti. We'd, uh, we'd like to help you, but uh, we can't work for free. Just... What do, you, what, what do you got for us? Take your pick. Whatever I have is yours. <laughs> oh. Scotty starts running around the place. He starts picking stuff up, putting it in his couch. Uh, he, she's, he starts. Well, he's happy with that. That's a start, I suppose. I suppose. Well, she, she, she also says that, um, you know, maybe that you can work something out with Madeline. Maybe there's maybe there's some more credits in, in the fund for uh, the landing. Usually uh, the Abadar Corporation usually gives us a deposit of credits every once in a while, so we can purchase supplies and, and keep the colony and the landing afloat. So maybe there's something that uh, you can work out with her. Hopefully she's still alive. All right, well... An angelic comes out and serves everybody, you know, tea or whatever they want with some biscuits and whatnot. All right, Alberta, the last thing. Uh, we'd like to use this as sort of a, a base of operations, a place to fall back to if we need to. Seems a little bit defensible and uh, stay here. What, what do you think about hmm. that? I think that? I think that's a great idea, and I was going to recommend that in the first place. Uh, because I, like I said, I, I've actually been left alone here, so I, I think it. I think it may be a good thing. Is is it just the? Is it just the, the three of you? Well, we got a couple of sneaky types out on the, on some roofs looking around, but uh, oh, I like just, that. Just uh, just about six of us, All and right. then of course, your uh, wonderful man here, Jelly. Well. We we've had our differences in the past, and I'm sure he's probably told you that we were married at one point. But you know, things just unfortunately didn't work out. Oh, that's a shame. Hmm. That's a shame. No, but the you know the Islanti they they don't know, but a few of us have been kind of coordinating behind the scenes. Uh, we're gonna try. We wanted to try to do another uh, a resistance because of the occupation that they have here and. You know, I, I've actually been put in charge of that. And I can, I'll, I'll speak freely with you guys, but I, we don't have all the pieces that we need yet. But I think with you guys on our side, I think perhaps we may have everything we need. But, you know, the first step is we need to, we need to weaken the Aslanti. So, yeah. you know, there's, uh, you know, a few targeted strikes around town could probably help. You know, if they're, especially on the quiet and the download, and then, the ultimate would be we need to get into that garrison. But I don't think we can get into the garrison until we get rid of the, and she does air quotes, get rid of the uh, the other Aslanti that are patrolling around the landing. Right. The first, uh, first order of business we're about to head out and go take care of is a few of the patrol that seems to be hanging out at the graveyard, I hear. Yeah, they, they usually patrol the border. And yeah, they usually come by a couple times a day, and but yeah, they're usually there most of the time when they're on duty. That is. But like I yeah. said, you're welcome to stay here if if you want to. I mean, I think that would probably be the uh, the smartest thing to do. And then once you know we get the the forces weakened, I'll be doing my part behind the scenes as well, uh, coordinating with the other members of the. Uh, 
I guess you can say the resistance team that we have. I, I don't want to tell you these names first because in case you're actually working